What's up guys and welcome to Dow Skateboarding. I'm Justin Curley, owner of Curley's Fitness, and today I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to help build a fitness foundation that'll help get you skating through life. All right guys, today we're gonna start out like any good workout regimen should with a little bit of mobility, a little bit of stretching work, right? And we're gonna try to stretch the muscle, kind of prep the joint, and kind of turn that nervous system on, get ready to rock, okay? So we're gonna start with what we call the world's greatest stretch. Um, I didn't name it, but I believe they call it that because it's working almost everything throughout the body. We're gonna get the hamstring, the adductor, the shoulder, the thoracic spine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? In order to get there though, we gotta start with a fancy split stance. So my right foot's gonna go forward, my left hand's gonna go to the floor, and we are splitting the floor with my hips. In order to do that, my back toe has to drive through the ground. My front heel stays down at all points, at all times. Then I'm gonna take my right arm and let that do all the work. Elbow to ankle, hand to the ceiling, hand to the floor outside of the foot. I wanna try to make contact with the floor at all times as I straighten that front leg as best I can. You're gonna feel a nice hamstring stretch there. Then I'm gonna unload, I'm gonna turn 90 degrees. From there, I'm going what we call a lateral lunge. I almost just kind of think of it as a Spider-Man pose. I'm loading one hip, I load the other hip, I turn 90 degrees the other way, and now I'm on the opposite side. My right hand goes to the floor, my left arm does all the work. Elbow to ankle, hand to the sky, hand to the floor, straighten that leg, pivot 90 for our lateral lunges. Again, my heel's down, other side, my heel's down, Pivot and I'm back on that original side to repeat that movement. Elbow to ankle, hand to the sky, floor, hamstring, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, and repeat. You can get away with going about eight to 12 reps here, about four to six on each side. I'm not gonna do eight to 12, I'm probably gonna call it there. But have fun, get warmed up, get that body ready to rock. So we're gonna go over one more mobility exercise here. Uh, something that's gonna be really good for internal rotation of the hip. A lot of times you land a little cockeyed, a little messed up. A lot of times you'll find yourself landing here. If our hips are not internally rotated or prepared for it, that's how we start blowing out knees, right? So we're gonna go, if we're starting just sitting straight up, I'm gonna take my ankle, knees, and hips to 90 degree angles, okay? I don't wanna be so collapsed on each other. This is a whole different movement. I wanna be split. My hips are split apart. And again, ankles, knees, and hips are making 90 degree angles, hence the term 90-90, okay? This is our 90-90 sit. From here, we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna build tension and stri uh, just stretch the glute and hamstring on the front side. To do so, you're gonna kind of rotate your chest in line with the knee, and I'm gonna push my hip back. That's how I'm gonna build this stretch, okay? I'm gonna try to bring the collapse those gaps tor towards each other. I don't wanna round the spine. This is easy. I wanna stay tall and build tension through that hip. Hold this for 30 to 60 seconds. You can go each side, repeat. Again, I'm not gonna sit here and hold for 30 to 60 seconds, but hold that. Then we're gonna work some end range control, okay? So we wanna get strength in this hip. So we're gonna get as tall as we can, and we're gonna take a big breath, let half of it out. So there's tension in your stomach, okay? T build tension throughout the body, and then my front leg is gonna drive into that floor. Imagine someone's kind of trying to steal a $100 bill from your knee, uh, underneath your knee. Don't let this leg come up, as this leg opens as wide as it can, and once it can go no further, you come back down. Build tension throughout the body, split the hips as wide as you can, and then come back down. You can get away about five to eight of these, and then you'll switch sides. Make sure your angles are strong and good, get tall, big breath, half of it let out, it's tension in the stomach. Split the hips, my front one drives down like someone's trying to steal money from me. Back one opens up wide, and come back down. You should feel the force coming through inside, deep inside that hip. Open, and back down. And again, you can get away with maybe five to eight of those on each side. Then after I've done those splits, I like to just do a few switches. So then I'm gonna go into that split. This time I just let my hip follow, end up on the other side. I split, 
end up on the other side, okay? The less contact to the floor, the harder it becomes. The more contact, the easier it is. You guys progress it and regress it however you feel needed. Go about 10 to 12 of those, right? So to go through it one more time, stretch, we stay tall, we push the hip back, we build. 30 to 60 second stretch on each side. Come out of that, give me about five to eight hip openers on each side, and then about five to eight switches on each side. Boom, bulletproof hips. So we spent a little time getting those hips bulletproof. Um, now we gotta worry about our shoulders, everything up above, right? So I know there's a lot of falling, a lot of crashing, a lot of catching yourself. So we wanna try to bulletproof those shoulders just the same way as we did with those hips, okay? What we gotta remember is that shoulder is just like the hip. It's a ball in the socket, right? So it should be able to move as much as we can I don't, in 360 degrees, okay? So we're, we're just gonna start with this a shoulder car, a controlled articulate rotation. Pretty much what we're doing, we're locking into place, just like we did in that 99. You take a big breath, let half of it out, you should be tension in the stomach. Squeeze the butt, grip the ground with your feet and turn dials, you should build tension in that butt, okay? If someone came and pushed you, you should be one solid object. You're gonna take one arm as if you just karate chop something and that elbow never bends. You're gonna bring that arm up as high as we can. Don't let the rib cage flare, keep that st stomach tucked in. Bring that arm as high as you can. Once I cannot go any further, my thumb is gonna come underneath my hand and continue to rotate out and away from me. So my palm should end up away, my thumb should end up behind. I come right back through, I hit this point where I cannot go any further, and I rewind that like a big freestyle stroke in the pool almost. Okay, I come back to that start position, reset, make sure I didn't lose any tension in the body, come as high as we can. Once you cannot go any further, thumb comes under, palm goes out and away, and we get to that next position. Then we rewind right back through. And you can make this as hard or as easy as you want, right? To make it hard, build tension in the body. Don't let anything move or rotate. It's all through that shoulder. To make it easy, relax a little bit. Give yourself a little freedom, okay? But at the end of the day, we want to try to build that motion through the shoulder as best we can. So now that we know kind of how that shoulder moves, that's our shoulder car. You can get away with maybe two to five reps there on each side. Then you can start playing around with tools, right? I have bands and I have sticks, but just the same, you could use a broomstick, you could use a towel, and it'll work just the same. But we're gonna go over our pull-aparts. I'm gonna use this, our imaginary towel for right now, so you can get the idea. This locates our, what you see people in the gym do all the time. They just try to start whipping the arms back and forth. We don't wanna make it ugly like that, okay? We wanna make tension, like I was just talking about. Build tension through the body. Big breath, half of it gets let out, squeeze the butt. Pull that band or the towel, whatever you have available, apart the whole time. And now as I do that, I bring that towel all the way around where it touches my butt. I'm pulling on it at all times, come back through, and repeat, okay? If say, for example, my hands are too narrow and I cannot get all the way around, I hit this sticky point and I can't go any further, that's fine, I hold, I pull a little bit harder, and then I come back through. Pull apart and repeat. Find that sticky point, see if you can't get a little bit further, pull a little bit harder, and then come back through, okay? You can, those are what we call our shoulder dislocates. I didn't name them, that, they're a scary name for no reason. Our shoulders should be able to do that. But again, you can use a broomstick, you can use a towel. Um, you can get away five to 10 reps there with the shoulder cars get away with maybe three to five reps on each side there. All right guys, we're gonna go over some strength training stuff now. Uh, I'm gonna go over the difference between squatting and hinging. They're very similar, they're almost like fraternal twins. They're very similar, but not identical by any means, okay? In my opinion, they are two of the best movements just for any human body, but in particular for a skateboarder. Uh, reason why, they're gonna build strong, bulletproof hips, glutes, hamstrings, quads, etc. okay? Everything that goes along with it as well. So. Real quick, just body weight stuff. This is, we can do everything with body weight. It always helps to have a load though, okay? So a kettlebell, a book bag, a barbell, whatever tool you have available, you can make it a load, right? A kettlebell is just, just one version of a tool, okay? But when I squat, my feet are gonna be, 90% of the time these cues are gonna follow you. There are differences in some cases. But in this, in this instance, my feet are gonna be hip to shoulder width apart. I'm not, I'm not going skiing, so my, they don't have to be neutral, right? They don't, my toes don't have to be north, north and south. I can angle them just a tad, maybe 15, 20 degrees at the most, okay? I don't want to ever be east and west, that's too much. 
So uh, my feet are hip to shoulders apart. My toes are angled just a little bit. And now I wanna make sure when I squat and I start taking my hips back and my butt down, my ankles, knees, and hips all stay wide, okay? That's the squat I'm looking for. I don't think about if you're coming off a skateboard, you don't wanna land here. It's gonna happen, but we want as much control and stability as we can in this position. These are the cues we're looking for. Hip to shoulder width apart with their feet, toes angled slightly. I'm gonna split the floor with my hips. So my ankles, knees, and hips all drive wide as I sit my butt down and I sit it back. My heels stay down at all times. I load the glute and I come out pushing through the, hip, through the heels. I come back down, load through the heels, and push back up, right? My whole foot is active, but the majority of my weight is gonna be from the ball of my foot to my heel. My big toe is kind of gripping the ground just to help with stability and everything. But at the end of the day, my weight's from the ball of the foot back to my heel. Now there is a whole lot of squatting we can do. Um, most of us don't have barbells at home, but the most common one is your barbell back squat, right? This is a stick, but barbell back squat. You load the bar and you back squat. You can do front squats, you can do a lot of stuff. My opinion, the end all be all tool is gonna be a kettlebell, especially for at home workouts. They're compact, they're easy to move, they're a little more available. You can hide it in the corner when you're not using it. Um, and they're very versatile. So in that case, our most common squat with the kettlebell is our goblet squat. We put it right in front of the chest, we pin our elbows to our side, we stay tall, and then we, like I said, ankles, knees, and hips go wide, I sit my butt down and back, I build tension, and I come out of the hole. I build tension, and I come out of the hole. All right, and that's your basic squat, right? Some of us might not have kettlebells, that's fine. Um, you can just work, you can work air squats, you work and work prisoner squats, hands behind your head like you're getting arrested. Keep your chest tall, drive into the hands. A lot of versions of squats we can work. Depends on what your goals are here, but for you guys, I'm gonna recommend probably eight to 12 reps, maybe three to five sets, give or take. Those are your basic cues that you're gonna need for any kind of squat, okay? Like I said before, it doesn't matter how you're gonna load it. Barbell, kettlebell, a book bag up front, whatever you wanna do, but, Nine out of 10 times, those are the cues we're looking for. Ankles, knees, and hips wide, toes angled, butt goes back. Now going on to our hinge, like I said, it's the fraternal twin. It's not quite identical. Hinges are gonna be a little harder to do without equipment, but I want you guys to know the difference. So my hinge is very similar. My feet are gonna be a little more narrow, and I'm gonna use this hinge to pick stuff off, stuff off the floor more times than not. There could be a kettlebell in this instance, it could be an Amazon package, it could be a baby, whatever you're picking up. Nine out of 10 times, it's gonna be a version of a hinge. So I lock my hips in and I drive through the ground to pick stuff up. So if you notice, it looks, just, it looks like a bad squat almost, but it's not, right? My squat, my butt's going vertical and it's still going back a little bit, but it's, more, it's going vertical more than anything. On my hinge, it goes back, down a little bit, then it just continues to go straight back behind me. So I should almost look like a gorilla at the bottom of this stance, okay? My chest is tall. My, again, my ankles, knees, and hips are wide. And I'm driving through the floor from the ball of my foot to my heel. I leg press that floor away and I get my hip all the way underneath me. Back to the floor, just like I hit rewind. Reset everything. Pull the shoulder blades into the back pocket. Lock the stomach into place. Drive through the floor, okay? Lower it back. And that's our hinge. So if you watch my back at all times, if I were to have a stick on my back, I have three points of contact. My head, my shoulder, and my tailbone. That, those points of contact never leave that stick at any time. So even with a one-handed hinge, okay? Those three points of contact remain on that stick. I'm never bowing my back. I'm never trying to squat it up. Right? I'm like a gorilla with three points of contact picking up something very heavy. In this case, not too heavy, but back to the floor, boom. So our squat and our hinge are the two most important things in the human body. Pushing, there's a lot of other stuff that we do, but this is gonna be almost the base of almost every exercise that's gonna start, right? A lot of ground force, a lot of power through the hip, squatting, vertical, hinging, a little more horizontal. All right, squatting, hinging. Both have their place, both have their time. 
Hinging is going to be a little harder to do without load. But again, you can make up whatever you want. Most people aren't going to have a barbell at home. Most people aren't going to have a kettlebell, kettlebell at home. If you do, more power to you. But I could just as well grab a book bag, grab my backpack, load a bunch of stuff in there, get low on it, hold it up from each side, and stand up. All right, guys, so far we've gone over some squatting, we've gone over hinging. I wanna go over some pushing and pulling. In my opinion, the four biggest movements of the human body, okay? Uh, squatting and hinging are our money makers just because they involve so much through the hip and everything else. Pushing and pulling, though, about just as important. Little easier to learn, few cues that you always wanna remember. The cues are always gonna be, don't let those elbows come higher than the shoulders because if you notice, my shoulders come into my ears. I don't want my shoulders into my ears. Think about bench pressing. This is gonna be painful. Same thing with a push-up, right? I wanna bring them down and I want my scapula or my shoulder blades to go into my back pocket. And I wanna try to keep them there as best I can. Then you gotta think about which angle you're gonna go through. We have vertical pulling and pushing. We have horizontal pulling and pushing. We have everything in between, right? Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward concept. You wanna make sure you're building tension throughout the whole body, just like we talked about earlier. You wanna keep the body as one piece, right? So, pulling is a little harder to do without certain equipment, but it's definitely doable. TRXs or suspension trainers, they're one of the best things you can get for at home. You can do a whole lot with them, but the basics of a horizontal pull. So, it looks like a vertical pull, but it's not because of the angle of my body, okay? But full extension, scapula or shoulder blades are into my back pocket, big breath, let half of it out. I don't want my hips to flare or my rib cage to flare. I also don't wanna be sitting my butt down, okay? My butt's tight, big breath, let half of it out. Shoulder blades are compact. Then I just pull myself into the strap. Constant tension remains on the strap. Full extension, constant tension, okay? You could probably rig something up with a towel in a doorway, but I am not gonna recommend it and, let, and put that liability on myself. But any suspension trainer, this is kind of our basic row. If you cannot pull, if it's too hard, then you would just come more vertical and it'd be a lot easier, right? So that's your horizontal pull. Your vertical pull, basic kind of pull up or chin up, okay? Hands go shoulder width apart. We're gonna go into a, what we call a hollow hold, so my feet are gonna be underneath me, right? Then from there, I am gonna put my scapula in my back pocket, as my first moment, my first motion, and then I just continue that pull. I get my chin above the bar, I go full extension, my scapula in my back pocket is that first motion, chin above the bar, and repeat. A lot, a lot harder than your TRX row, but each have their place, each have their time. Pushing is gonna go right hand in hand with that. Our cues are the same. Don't let the shoulder shrug. Scapula in the back pocket. Push up is probably the easiest one we have to demo. You grab an elevated surface, a bench in this case, a bed, a chair, whatever you got, the higher the surface, the easier it's gonna be. But we're gonna start on this bench just to show what we're trying to show. I'm gonna put my scapula into my back pocket. I'm gonna make sure my shoulders don't shrug into my ears and I'm gonna lock my hip and my glute into place, right? So meaning I don't wanna be here and I don't wanna be piked up to the sky. So scapula locked in, big breath, let half of it out, squeeze the butt as strong as you can and maintain all that tension as you lower your chest towards the surface. Get to that bottom and push straight through. Make sure you're recruiting the whole hand. I almost like to imagine I'm grabbing a dial and turning it and that helps keep my shoulders safe that way, okay? It doesn't let doesn't let them shrug, doesn't let my elbows go too wide. We grab the whole hand, we grab the dial, imaginary dial with my hand, and I turn it into each other. My elbows go in, my scapula, and my shoulder blades stay in my back pocket, and that's how I perform your push-up, okay? So, if that's too easy, then you lower the surface. So, the floor is gonna be a lot lower, so we've got a lot more distance to clear, gonna make it a lot harder. Same rules apply. Shoulders in the back pocket, squeeze the butt, big breath, let half of it out. Maintain one plank-like position, lower the chest to the floor, and drive straight through, okay? We're trying to fight this, we're trying to fight this. Now let's say, okay, this is too easy, this is too hard, what do I do? Do a kneeling push-up, right? I have no problem with push-ups on the knees, I have problems with push-ups on the knees when they turn into this, okay? I don't know what this is, but I see it a lot. Instead, think of all those cues. Tuck the hips, 
squeeze the butt, shoulder blades in the back pocket, big breath, let half of it out. And now I'm doing a kneeling push up. There's a lot more work than this, or even someone trying to do a push up when they're not ready for it. I would much rather have you do it here. Squeeze the butt, elbows in, big breath, half of it out. Okay? So, progressions. The higher it is, the easier it becomes. The lower, the harder it is. Now, just like our pulling, we got horizontal and we have vertical pressing as well, or pushing. Um, usually, you're gonna need a tool. I'm just gonna use a kettlebell real quick just to kind of go over it, just so you guys are aware of the difference. But, pressing overhead, my shoulder, even though my arm's going above head, my shoulder's still not shrugging, right? It's not shrugging into my ear. That being said, I also really want to make sure my rib cage isn't flaring, my hips aren't going forward. This is the biggest compensation you'll see out of people, okay? So I'm gonna literally just press whatever's in my hand straight up overhead, okay? I have a little bit of thoracic movement or upper spine movement happening, because if I don't, it ends up like Superman trying to fly and that's a lot of load on my shoulder capsule. I don't want to load that. So I press up overhead, and as it comes overhead, my chest just comes a little bit forward to where my elbow is in line with my ear. Right back to the bottom, and then you repeat. Right. You can go two bells. I just have one bell available right now. You can go two bells. You can go two bucks. You can go one buck. All right, whatever you have available, you can load a backpack, hold it by the top handle, and load it the same way I just did. Front rack, press. It feels very light now that the kettlebell's not in my hand, but it's the same deal. Don't whip yourself in the face with the straps. That's the difference between your horizontal and vertical push. And as we saw earlier, the difference between your horizontal and vertical pull. And then you just change the angles to kind of put it somewhere in between the two. It doesn't have to be strict vertical. It doesn't have to be strict horizontal. There's a lot of different angles. Again, if you have a bench available, you can put your feet on the bench, hands on the ground. Now you just change your angle. You're somewhere between a horizontal and somewhere between a vertical. But a lot of variations, as long as you have the base foundations of the movements. You wanna learn this cues, right? Shoulders don't shrug, elbows stay down, one solid piece throughout the whole body. Just like we learned when we squat and we hinge. Ankles and knees, hips stay wide, and then my hips do all the work that way. Same thing here. Shoulders stay down, elbows stay in, and that way the muscle does all the work, not the joint. So we've gone over a little bit of mobility, a little stretching stuff. We've gone over some basics of the strength training, foundational stuff. Now let's pretend it's snowing, it's raining, it's ugly outside, you can't get out, you can't skate, you can't do what you love, but you still wanna get that heart rate up, right? The third part of fitness, conditioning. Mobility, strength, conditioning, okay? Let's say you're inside, you're stuck inside. Let's use some of these movements that we just learned, right? Easiest way to do it, you can, you can pick and choose the exercises you want. I'm giving you two or three here to use though. Easiest way to do it is set a timer for rest, set a timer for work, set a timer for rest, set a timer for work, okay? So in this first one, we're gonna utilize our hinge and our squat. We're gonna load our hinge with our hips straight back. I'm gonna take my arms with me in this case because that way I'm gonna use them to help propel. Arms go back, chest stays tall, I load the hip and I explode. Soft landing, if you notice when I land, None of this is happening. My ankles, knees, and hips stay wide, just like we went over on our squats and our hinges. We load and explode. Load and explode. Load and explode. Don't worry too much about height. Worry about being soft on that landing. We want to protect ourselves. Almost like break dancing. I'm, I'm aging myself here, but the worm, right? Imagine your feet are doing the worm with the floor. It kind of lands and then absorbs, right? Load and absorb. Cool? Now, exercise two, our sit-through. Nate and I used to do jiu-jitsu together, so we all know sit-throughs really well between him and I. But I'm gonna go into my hands and knees position. I'm gonna take my knees just barely off that floor, maybe an inch off the floor. From there, I'm gonna work that mobility that we went over earlier, right? I'm gonna have to force my shoulder to be able to rotate on the axis like we talked about. So I gotta rotate on the shoulder axis so I'm gonna add some demand of that, but to do so, I'm gonna take my knees right off the ground, an inch off the ground. I'm gonna take my leg, and I'm gonna come underneath the body, hence the word sit through. If you look at my shoulder, it's almost ending in that same position we did on that car. It's not all the way back here, thank goodness, that's a little more torque, but I'm asking it to rotate on the axis of the shoulder. I come right back to that starting position, and I sit through other side, okay? I come back through, and I sit through. It's always about my leg 
going under the body, okay? Most people mess up because they try to take the leg over the body and it turns into like a weird breakdance move almost, okay? We're not doing that. We're sitting under and sitting through. Sitting under and sitting through, okay? So now to piece these together into one workout, how do we do it? Everyone's gonna have a little different wind, especially in the beginning, but maybe start, I think a good safe example, give yourself 20 seconds of work. You go 20 seconds of those jump squats that we went over. Take 40 seconds of rest, 20 seconds of sit-throughs, 40 seconds of rest, 20 seconds of uh, jump squats, right? And so now you're working a two to one ratio. You're resting for 40 seconds, working for 20. Uh, most people think it's gotta be the other way around, that we wanna work for twice as much as we're resting. They're not wrong in some cases, you're just not gonna get as much work done, right? You're gonna blow out a, a gasket a lot faster, you're gonna run out of wind, you're gonna start losing power, right? You're gonna lose power development. So give yourself enough rest that you can get through it. So a good starting position I think is a two to one, maybe even a three to one ratio. So 20 seconds of work, 40 seconds of rest. Try to do each one of those four to six times, okay? Now you got yourself an eight to, with math, huh? Eight to 12 minute workout, but trust me, your heart will be pounding, your cardio will be getting worked. We're getting that indoor workout when we can't get outdoors and do what we love. All right guys, so just to recap real quick, we went over a lot of stuff, so I'm gonna go over very quickly. We did a little, mo little mobility work. We started with that world's greatest stretch, then we went to our 90-90 drills. That's where we're on the floor, 90 degree angles of our ankles, knees, and hips. Then we went over some of the foundations of our strength training, our hinging, our squatting, and then our pushing and our pulling. You learn those four things and you get comfortable with them, the exercises become a dime a dozen, right? Those are the bases, those are the cues that you wanna remember. Then we threw in a little bit of conditioning, a little bit of cardio for you guys, reutilizing some of that stuff we went over. We just did a Metcon, metabolic conditioning or HIIT style training. 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off, going from our jump squat to our sit through. All hands and knees sitting through. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned a little something from it. If you did, be sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you're in the Fort Collins area, please come check out Curly's Fitness. Let's get stupid strong, keep on skating through life.